Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. Just before I do the introductory for this video sequence and such, um, I have to tell you guys that my next family reunion, as of this video being posted currently, will happen tomorrow. And I've been feeling a bit inadequate in terms of whether or not my creations deserve any form of social recognition. Because I just want to make things work. And I hope you guys understand. And I'll try my best to avoid procrastination and such. For this particular footage, I will introduce three characters. Uh, Darella Victors, Eight, and Fairy. A villain and two heroes, basically. So if you guys bear with me, I will uh, read the description for each of them, and I hope you guys would be able to tag along. So just bear with me. The first one is Darella Victors. So just hope you could go along. Dorella Victors, real name none, height 6 feet 2 inches, weight 147 pounds, status villain, an enemy and former sister of Captain Space. Base, the futuristic dimension, mobile. Intelligence, 4.5 brains. Behavior, stubborn and genocidal. She'd never tolerate her opposing former sister. Lethality, as above. She's willing to even kill her own duplicates. Weaknesses. Rejection and betrayal. She suffers from a bad case of asthma. Powers. She has martial arts, telekinesis, and high ferocity in combat. She wields a spiritual occurrence known as the power, which grants her with an undisclosed number of capabilities. She can wield a series of legendary slazers, which are katanas made of a raw plasma that's heart hotter than a star. She can also make an army of 5,000 duplicates. Eyes greenish bluish, hair light pink, formerly blonde. Origin In the futuristic dimension, Dorella Victors and her younger sister Janet were taking their first voyage to research a newly formed neutron star, hoping to get a life of glory afterwards. However, the neutron star made a molecular pulse that fried everyone on board except for Dorella and Janet. Dorella found that she gained access to an undisclosed power known simply as the power, and Janet became forever 30 feet tall. Feeling more hope in herself than ever before, Dorella lost her innocence from her power, which led to a conflict between the sisters and the detonation of their ship. Being forever disowned by Janet, who later became Captain Space, Dorella used her powers to make a horde of duplicated followers and made a skull and crossbones looking ship called the Mortality, vowing to eliminate her more heroic former sister before performing genocide onto the two Earths. Costume. She normally dresses in black leather clothes. Teams, solitary, commands her duplicates, or other villains. Original inspiration, Darth Vader. The next character that I'll introduce is an interesting kind of hero. And here it is. Eight. Real name, Samantha. Height, eight feet, eight inches. Weight, 322 pounds. Status Hero and Hoof Heroes member. Base Mythos Atlantic Ocean. Mobile. Intelligence Two and a half brains. Behavior Cheerful and willing. She enjoys putting her powers to good use. Lethality Highly deadly. You can never see it coming. Weaknesses She suffers from a severe case of hyperactivity. Powers. She possesses eight strong legs, each for every direction of a compass, 
She can run across water, over rainbows, to Tartarus and back, and can slow down the time around her, all due to her intense speed. Along with her sharp hooves, she's also immune to dark magic. Eyes silverish blue, hair purplish black and flowy. Origin. One time, Centaur and Pan were on a date when they suddenly noticed something fast coming from all directions at once. When that something stopped, they found it was a female centaurian with eight legs instead of the traditional four. She then told the two that her name is either Eight or Samantha, whichever they personally chose. Since the encounter, nobody knew where she truly came from, and Samantha will always answer that she's from Norway. One time, Voodoo had transported her nefarious army of murderous ex-soldiers to the heart of Tokyork. But eventually, Eight arrived and defeated the army and their master in less than ten seconds. And all with nothing but her speed and her immunity to dark spells. Recently, Eight became a member of a hero team founded and led by Centara, which was since known as the Hoof Heroes. Costume. She simply wears a purple fabric top. Teams. Solitary, with the Hoof Heroes, and other heroes. Order Inspiration, Slepnir of Norse Mythology. This is the final character that I'll introduce in this video, and this is another unique one. So I hope you guys would enjoy the sequencing and such. Fairy, real name, none. Height, 245 feet, weight, 13,500 tons. Status hero in Princess of the Mega Fairies. Base, the land of altered masses, Indian Ocean, mobile. Intelligence, three brains. Behavior, flirtatious, lovely, and somewhat cautious. She always enjoys serving and defending her mother. Lethality, only if angered or during a fight. Weaknesses, iron and sunburns. Powers. She has the same powers as her mother, though they aren't as powerful by comparison. Eyes, pale blue. Hair, platinum white and flowy. Origin. When the tyrannical cosmic learned that the Priantromosiculus gave Queen Titana, made Queen Titana pregnant with a daughter, she decided to give her unborn child a genetic defect. When the child was born, it was the first fairy in history to be born as an albino and Titana decided to name her simply Fairy. By her late adolescence, Fairy, Fairy decided to travel beyond the land of altered masses until she came across the kaiju villain Karaka during one of her rampages. rampages. Realizing her intentions, Fairy started fighting her until Titana soon arrived and commanded her mega fairies to help her with a cephalopod threat. After the defeat of Karaka, Fairy was marked as a hero to trust, and she nowadays would spend part of her time helping other heroes, if not helping her mother. Costume. She wears fairy clothes that match her skin. Teams. Solitary. With her mother. And other heroes. Mortal inspiration. Fairies. And albinos. Well, I... Hope you guys enjoyed the three characters, and I hope you guys appreciate the, all the dedication and progress that I've been trying to do for my creations. The one thing that my universe is missing is profit. So if anyone out there is skilled with finances, or knows someone who's skilled with finances, I would like someone to be willing to help me make a profit out of my creations and try to make things work in a more social aspect because so far I have approximately around 2,000 um, views as of so far approximately and only 30 subscribers. Sometimes I feel like it's not enough of a population and I just hope that I would get some level of dedication and accomplishments by the next 10 years and I just hope it's, I hope you guys appreciate the characters I've introduced, and I hope you guys have 
the toleration of how things have turned out in terms of me introducing this stuff to you guys. If you have any questions and concerns and other things, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. You don't have to. Like, I don't want to seem desperate, but at the same time, I'd like the best of intentions. That's why I keep saying to you guys that you could decide for yourself if you want to like and subscribe and such, because I don't want to be stubborn about it, because that might ruin my reputation in terms of my creations and such. <sighs> hope you guys have a fine summer vacation, and I hope you guys are having a fine rest of the time and such. Once again, I'm Leviathan. You could... Do all that stuff that you already know about, and until next time, in transmission.